Ukraine launched one of its biggest drone attacks on Russia since the war began, killing a woman in the Moscow region. The strikes forced the closure of airports around the capital and caused a fire at Zhukovsky airfield. Ukraine's foreign minister thanked Australia for its support and expressed interest in decommissioned military equipment. Iraq used preparing for potential financial difficulties in 2025 due to falling oil prices, according to Mother Saleh, a senior advisor to Prime Minister Mohammed Shia al Sudani. The country, heavily reliant on oil revenue, aims to implement stricter financial discipline and increase non-oil revenues to mitigate the expected budget crunch. Germany's government plans to tighten controls at all land borders starting September 16 to combat irregular migration and enhance public safety. Interior Minister Nancy Faeser announced measures allowing authorities to reject more migrants at the border, reflecting the government's response to rising concerns over security and integration amid increased migration flows. SpaceX's Falcon 9 launches the Polaris Dawn mission, targeting the highest Earth orbit ever reached by a commercial crew. The mission will test Starlink's laser-based communications and attempt the first commercial spacewalk, pushing the boundaries of human spaceflight in Earth's orbit. The Princess of Wales, Kate Middleton, expressed her relief at completing chemotherapy treatment in a heartfelt video released by Kensington Palace. Reflecting on a challenging year since revealing her cancer diagnosis, she emphasized the suddenness of life changes and hinted at future public engagements, including remembrance events and a Christmas concert. The United States and China held their first high-level military talks to stabilize relations and avoid misunderstandings, particularly in the South China Sea. U.S. Indo-Pacific Command Head Aden, Sam Papara urged the Chinese military to reconsider aggressive tactics, emphasizing the need for ongoing communication to prevent accidental conflicts. Norway is set to close its embassy in Afghanistan, marking the second diplomatic mission to announce its closure this week. The decision follows the Taliban's declaration that they no longer recognize embassies established by the previous Western-backed government, highlighting ongoing tensions and challenges in Afghanistan's diplomatic landscape. Pope Francis concluded a three-day pilgrimage in East Timor where an estimated 600,000 people nearly half the country's population attended his final mass. This turnout marks one of the largest papal events in terms of proportionate attendance, reflecting the deep connection between the Pope and the Pope of East Timor.